So it, it's been a tradition for me to talk at our annual technology conference about what we've been doing during the year. I have to say actually that in recent years it's been getting more and more difficult to do that because uh, uh, we've got all sorts of exciting stuff going on in many, many different areas. So really what I get to do here is only to give the highlights and I'm going to have to live the really fun stuff uh, for many other people around our company to talk about over the next three days. Well, let's start off by talking about core Mathematica. So what's happening with that? Well, uh, it's really very satisfying. I mean, when, when we first started developing Mathematica nearly 25 years ago, we had certain core principles about automation, about coherence of design, about built-in knowledge, about the idea of symbolic programming, and it's, it's uh, really quite wonderful to see how successful and timeless these principles have remained. And over the years, we've sort of slowly understood more and more about what those principles make possible, um, and that's allowed us to sort of build out Mathematica more and more and extend it into more and more areas. In 2007, we made a big jump, kind of a whole reinvention of Mathematica where we figured out dynamic interactivity and functions like manipulate and so on. It was sort of a whole new paradigm, not just being able to get static results, but using the symbolic power of Mathematica to generate dynamic interactive programs as, as results. And that led, among many other things, to our Wolfram Demonstrations project, which uh, in part, thanks to many of you, now has more than 6,000 wonderful interactive demonstrations in, in all sorts of areas. Well, the big jump in Mathematica that happened in 2007 was Mathematica 6. And actually, it's hard to believe, for me at least, that that happened only three years ago because things like manipulate and dynamic interactivity and so on have become so much a part of how at least I use Mathematica that it seems like it, it sort of always has to have been this way. Well, after Mathematica 6 at our conference two years ago, we had a surprise, which was Mathematica 7, introducing all sorts of new areas like image processing, built-in parallelism, and so on. Uh, it's actually been sort of amazing how fast our development of Mathematica has been progressing. Very satisfying. It's, it's kind of a, a payback for all those years that we've been spent very carefully building up the system, working so hard to keep everything unified and consistent so that all the different parts of the system can interact and, and build on each other. Also making everything as automated as possible so that we can build up more and more elaborate capabilities without having to sort of think about the steps inside. Well, I think over the years, Mathematica has become by far the world's largest interconnected web of algorithms of all kinds. In a sense, we've, uh, we've had a very simple strategic methodology, just implement everything. Um, often we have to discover new methods and new algorithms and in, in some areas we're definitely the world's most energetic producer of R&D results in, in those areas. And at every step we sort of maintain the core principles of Mathematica, coherence design, automation and so on. So we've got this very, very powerful engine of development running using Mathematica to develop Mathematica, using everything we've done over the past 25 years to do more. And at this point, I, I think it's really got a quite unstoppable momentum, just building more and more and more and more different areas. Of course, while it's terrific for us internally to have all these wonderful things we're building in Mathematica, the thing that makes what we do really satisfying is delivering the results uh, to, uh, to our users around the world. So I am excited to say that, that uh, today we're ready to announce another step in that direction. Um, this is uh, something that we'll be shipping next month Mathematica version 8, so it's about to be released. Well, what is in version 8? First thing is uh, uh, automated probability and statistics super functions. One of the things we've, we've done in Mathematica is sort of steadily go through different, different kinds of areas and try and find sort of a systematic symbolic way to represent those areas. Um, and an area which is uh, sort of an important one for a great many different fields is probability, statistics, statistical distribution, these kinds of things. Well, I'm, I'm sort of excited to be able to say that uh, we now have a sort of complete symbolic calculus, so to speak, uh, for representing these kinds of things and for doing computations with them, and I'll show you a couple of examples soon. Just running through, uh, sort of supplementing that, in uh, statistics, uh, just like in the area of mathematical functions, there are all these essentially special distributions, analogous to special functions of mathematics and mathematical physics. And sort of each special distribution tends to be something that is the, the pride and joy of some particular area, whether it's reliability analysis or survival curves or whatever else. Um, and uh, what, one thing that we've done in, in Mathematica 8 is to collect the, the world's largest uh, uh, 
set of, of uh, statistical distributions uh, from all sorts of different areas and be able to build them into Mathematica and be able to compute with them. Also set it up so that you can build your own distributions, a little bit like interpolating functions and so on. You can set up uh, distributions from empirical data and manipulate them using this, all the same techniques as with other kinds of distributions. So other things in sort of core uh, algorithms, uh, permutations and group theory algorithms now built into Mathematica, highly efficient, um, all sorts of uh, capabilities there. Um, a number of other major enhancements um, uh, in, uh, for example, exact matrix computations, um, are much enhanced and so on. Other things. Uh, in version 7, we introduced image processing in Mathematica. We have uh, this wonderful workflow for, for doing image processing directly within Mathematica notebooks. Um, in version 8, uh, the image processing system has gone from being uh, really quite state-of-the-art to being sort of beyond state-of-the-art and really very, uh, very complete. Um, all sorts of interesting functions um, uh, for doing feature, feature detection, uh, segmentation, um, things like uh, uh, optical character recognition and so on. Another area, uh, sort of in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in Mathematica, we're, we're having built sort of the foundations that we've built, we're able to kind of go and uh, uh, go out into a variety of application areas. An area that uh, we've now built into Mathematica are all kinds of financial computations, valuation of all sorts of financial instruments, including some pretty exotic ones, uh, some much more standard uh, uh, kinds of cash flow computations and so on that are still of, of very general uh, utility. Another area, another big area, um, control systems. Uh, kind of finally got convinced that control systems are kind of uh, a general enough set of techniques that they should be actually built in as a core part of Mathematica. And so we have a, a, a very um, cleanly designed uh, set of capabilities in the control systems area and now the ability to sort of con connect control systems methodology to other kinds of uh, methods in Mathematica. Um, another area is uh, wavelets. Again, something which we now think is sort of mature enough that it's worth building in as a core technique in Mathematica. Um, lots of interesting issues um, in representing the kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, fractal collections of, of, uh, of lists involved with wavelets, representing that in a good way in Mathematica. Uh, I think it, it's, uh, it's worked out very nicely and, and uh, uh, wavelets are very, very efficient in Mathematica. Another huge area is graph theory and networks. So there have been uh, external packages like Combinatorica and so on that have existed for a very long time uh, for doing things with, with graphs and networks. In version 8, we have fully integrated, highly efficient uh, graph theory capabilities built, uh, built directly into the system. Um, and uh, that's another sort of major direction here. Um, in the area of uh, software development, one exciting thing is uh, uh, compiled functions, a lot of things with compilation. A lot of technology for being able to uh, take Mathematica numerical type code and actually generate C code from it uh, that you can not only run external to Mathematica, but you can actually compile, load, and run within Mathematica. Uh, getting you, uh, through, through DLL mechanisms, getting kind of uh, maximally optimized speed. Another thing of, uh, of importance, so to, you can also load DLLs into Mathematica, that's another, another thing to say, so you can avoid kind of going through the MathLink symbolic layer and into program communication in that case. Also, uh, support for um, something requested for many years by many people, including myself, um, the ability to have real sort of shell script-like uh, runnability of Mathematica so that you can uh, uh, have a large sort of scripting system that calls on Mathematica. That's, that's now uh, something that is, that is built into the system. Also, uh, kind of in a, uh, in a different direction, uh, GPUs are a, a, a popular topic these days, and in Mathematica 8 there is support for GPUs, for, for CUDA, and, and so on. Um, and uh, that's something that uh, it's good to start experimenting with now. I think in future versions that will be kind of a more streamlined uh, approach to GPUs. It's a great, at this stage, it's a great sort of uh, uh, kit for, for working with GPUs in Mathematica. Lots of detailed enhancements in sort of language components of Mathematica. Uh, in, uh, in graphics and visualization, 
there are all these kinds of, a little bit, again, like special functions, there are special plots. And in Mathematica 8, uh, there's a, a wide collection of statistical plotting functions that have been implemented. Also, uh, 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 financial charts set up in a nice interactive way. Uh, all sorts of uh, types of uh, uh, special financial charts now supported directly within, within Mathematica. Um, also, uh, uh, drawing tool system, much enhanced, and uh, lots, of, lots of nice new stuff in 2D and 3D graphics, uh, particularly texture mapping in 3D and so on. Um, also, uh, just real practical stuff and, and things about printing and sort of the word processing capabilities of Mathematica. Lots of things people have been requesting for a long time are now, uh, uh, are now in, good, in good shape. Let me just... Uh, show you one thing which is kind of a, a, um, uh, a scoreboard of, uh, of where we're at. This is kind of a plot of uh, the number of functions in Mathematica as a function of time from, uh, from the beginning of Mathematica time at least. Um, and uh, uh, what, um, what we see is something I consider very impressive, that um, uh, starting with version 5 we've had this really dramatic increase um, in every version in the functionality is sort of a measure of the functionality being added to Mathematica. In fact, it's, it's interesting to see we, we passed the 3,000 function mark and uh, uh, in between version 7 and version 8, we added over 500 new functions. Um, in fact, the number of functions added is, is uh, pretty close to the total number of functions that existed in Mathematica version 1. So that gives a sense of, um, uh, of what's involved. It's um, uh, really uh, when, when we we created Mathematica 6, we talked about reinventing Mathematica, and I think this plot reflects uh, the success of that reinvention, that it's been possible to have uh, this, uh, this remarkable kind of ramp um, of, uh, of R&D achievement.